weather's looking beautiful, let's head out for the day. We'll catch a feed of flatties, the good old fashioned way. I know a little place to go, to get some light relief. It's just somewhere between the river and the reef. So you think you'll catch a big one, with all your fancy gear. A day out on the water, with the rods, the reels and beer. If you come home empty handed, your mates will give you grief. But you are still between the river and the reef. Hi folks, welcome to River to Reef. What an action-packed program we have in store tonight. We have a great lot of guests, some information that'll help you with your fishing line, for example. Our good mate Steve Adder will show us how to tie a U-Butte Paternoster rig and show us different line strengths, how they work on your hooks and what knots to tie with them. It's very, very informative and it'll help you a lot. Also, Marine Safety Victoria will give us an insight into how to buy a second-hand fiberglass boat what to look for, there's lots of pitfalls, that'll be explained. We have a new butte competition. Also, Corey Banks. Corey, well, as he's known, he's known as a bit of a teaser. Here he is, come on Corey, tease us. Well, welcome back for something a bit different again. Today we're gonna to talk about lure attractors and uh, we're trying to attract fish. Although some of these things people can have all sorts of ideas what we could attract. But probably something that's pretty well known today is the Witch Doctor put out by Pakula. And as we're all aware, this item here is used to attract marlin. You tow it behind the boat at very slow speed, it rotates, flashes light off through the water everywhere and is a great attractor. These are fairly recent uh, on the market. I'm going to say recent, probably been around 15 plus years, 20 years, well, could even be 20. But before that we used to use lots of things and we've modified them over the years. I remember at one stage there trying to attract tuna etc people used to get beer cans, tie them together and trail you know, 10 beer cans behind the boat and that way it would be flashing sunlight off it, making a noise. Of course the cans were empty, you'd never use a full can out the back but it was something that was attracting fish around. Another popular item but has been modified is what we call the birds. And these here are, are wooden ones with plastic, that's got the um, wood through it. Some of these got some perspex through them. The idea when you troll these behind the boat as you're going along, they're diving in and out of the water to give the impression that it's birds diving in and out of the water. That makes larger fish underneath, which can be tuna. It can be uh, uh, from your tuna species, your bluefin, your yellowfin, etc., your albacore, your striped tuna, bonito, even down to those that go after Australian salmon. It's a great attractor to bring a school of fish up. If the school is down, they see birds working on the surface, they presume there's bait fish, so they'll come up to it. Another simpler method of more modern times is floats. They've all got rattles and things in it. Again, you make them up, trail them behind the, your boat. Lights are flashing everywhere, and it's a great attractor. These items here will attract fish up from great depths and you'd be surprised how deep fish will come up with an attractor working above them. Very simple but very effective. These birds here they are in the wood, these are now available in plastic and uh, in most tackle shops have them. Not enough people use them, if you're going out trolling always put some attractors out behind you, it will make a big difference to your fishing. Anyway until next time, tight lines. Well folks, I haven't been sent to the salt mines of Siberia and no, I don't have a canary hanging around me as miners used to do in the 1800s. What I'm wearing is a very, very practical new item. I mean, torches are not new. There's many as torches in various shapes, sizes and forms. This is a little headlamp. Now this is just so practical. It is totally adjustable so you can adjust to whatever you're doing. If you're putting bait on your hook or if you're walking around the boat uh, perhaps you're an early morning jogger through the winter months where it's a lot uh, darker. You can wear one of these on your push bike. They're just so practical, so adjustable. They just use AAA batteries, two little batteries, and they send a light beam possibly somewhere up to 60, 70 yards away. So it's a very concentrated light. It is, uh, it's new, it's ideal for camping, fishing and boating. And again, to check this out, they're not deer, but go to the River to Reef website and just click on 
Mercury link and that'll show you where these can be obtained but a very very practical item particularly for people fishing and boating of the night time. <laughs>
So when you're out on the boat, you can do it easily. Now there I have, I've just pulled it back through the once, straight half blood knot. We're pulling it up tight. A little bit of saliva, so the knot comes. And remember that a neat knot is a strong knot. Trim your tags. Now in this case, we've got three tags. The double, and the spare from the main line. Now here, before that was breaking then, quite simply, the pressure. I use two hands, and he's having trouble holding it. So we've got a much stronger knot. Now, it's finally broken, but have a look where it's broken. It's above the knot. Therefore, what we've done is achieved the full breaking strength of your main line. If you're using 6.3 kilos, that's what you're going to get. Quite simple, practice it at home, so when you're out on the water, it's second nature. On River to Reef, to help you catch more fish, we want to give you a few more hints, and we'll continue on talking about knots again today, and rigs, and the rig we're going to concentrate on is a simple old Pat Nosta. Everybody thinks it's been done and done and done, and they know what it is. Well, for the people who don't know what a Pat Nosta, typical rig where you can have a sinker at the bottom, a couple of droppers, running hooks or whatever off, and then run it up to your main line. Pretty simple. How I used to do my Pat Nosters was pretty simple. I'd just grab the main line, create a loop, and just do a couple of simple surgeon's knots. Effective enough, I thought. Trouble what I didn't realise. But I was actually weakening the, the leader or the main line. And there was no control. With that with a hook on it, we'll just hang down, spin around, and maybe even tangle up onto my main line. I'll show you something a bit more effective and how it works. We'll use a fairly heavy leader here just so you can see it on camera. It'll take a little bit of experience but cut off your leader material around about a metre long. Approximately 40 centimetres up the line grab it between your two fingers and twist the opposite direction. At the same time, move your hands together. And what we're creating here is a twisted dropper, hence the name of this knot. If you want to, you can actually pull it apart again and create a couple more twists. That will make it a much tighter dropper. Once you've got to an appropriate length, and approximately 20 centimetres usually, usually enough, bring it back over itself. Pull it apart between your fingers. Hold it with your dropper away and the crossover towards you. And then twist that between your fingers about five times. Creating a loop, pull your dropper through, hold it between your lips, and gradually pull that main line. A little bit of saliva always helps it grab. And what we've created on our leader is a dropper, but a twisted dropper that has a 90 degree angle off the main line. The pressure on your line is evenly spaced over that knot and the likelihood of that coming down and twisting onto your main line has been reduced dramatically. Here 
can put a hook on quite simply by running your loop through your hook up over and back onto itself and you can always change that hook quite simply but as you can see even with the weight of a hook and a bait which will come onto it there it's kept away from your main line reducing your tangles okay we've made up our pat noster and we've got two droppers on there and we'll show you what you can do with that other dropper in a moment but at the bottom just put the old surgeon's or granny's knot double it over tie it twice trim your tag now trimming the tag stops knots, knots in the bottom it also reduces the spinning of the line in the current or as it's dropping to the ocean floor once you've got a loop like this you can just interchange your sinkers and there whatever you want to tie it to your main line you may want to tie it straight to a swivel or you might want to put a swivel there and have a snap lock on your main line something like that but being a heavier leader with on a lighter main line the knot there doesn't have to be as secure as that knot on your swivel one of the things I believe you should do is experiment have a think about what's happening down there on the ocean floor maybe think about what could be looking at your bait if you have made a dropper similar to this peel it back a little bit about a third of the way along snip it and you've got one single dropper and one short dropper on this you can tie your hook or a popping bug or something similar on the second tag why not tie a saltwater fly if that's there what we look like in the current to a fish is a predator type fish hunting something smaller that will get anything excited a very effective tool or when you've got tying your pattern noster up at the top of it why not put a squid jig there's many different ways of doing knots and if you're a little bit unsure go and ask your local tackle shop they're a lot more helpful than the department store Last week we looked at the pitfalls associated with buying and maintaining an aluminium tinny. This week we're going to be looking at fibreglass boats. And here we are in a workyard and a lot of these boats would probably be happier out on the water. But they're here today being worked on probably because of one main reason and a word associated with a lot of fibreglass boats and that's osmosis. And here tonight we've got Adrian again to describe it all to us and give us all the pitfalls and what to look for. Thank you, Tony. Um, now, osmosis. This is the word with fiberglass boats. It's the typical fiberglass boat molded in the usual way. Uh, here we have the outer layer of the fiberglass boat, which is known as the gel coat. This gel coat is in fact uh, not waterproof. It's semi-waterproof. Water can in fact very slowly percolate or go through this layer and can in fact go underneath. Osmosis is created when there's a slight hole underneath this gel coat, when the moulding has not been perfectly made. The water will go through the gel coat, into the little hole underneath, and slowly expand out, 
react with the chemicals inside the fiberglass and cause a blister to appear on the outside of the boat. If you see little blisters appearing on the outside of a fiberglass boat, the trick is to just gently press them perhaps with the end of your fingernail and if some smelly chemicals appear, you'll know that that is an osmosis blister. Now the result of those osmosis blisters, if you have them extensively over your boat, is that they actually have to be ground out or filed out or drilled out throughout all the areas where they exist. The boat then has to be uh, dried out extensively to make sure there's no, none of those chemicals left in, on the surface of the boat. Here we can see, in fact, the end result. The gel coat here has been ground away, exposing the little pits. The little pits have, in fact, been chilled or drilled out and then the boat has been left to dry for a considerable period of time. The next thing that has to happen after this, I can show you on the other side of the boat. Over here we can see, here is the uh, blisters have been exposed and drilled out and then they've been filled with an epoxy putty. Uh, over the top of this layer when the epoxy has been um, has, has dried out, we then put an epoxy layer again of, of thinned out epoxy all over this boat. When this has been finished, the whole boat will then have to be replastered and fared back up again. An extensive and very expensive job indeed. This particular boat, which is about uh, 30 meters or 30 feet or 10 meters long, would probably cost several thousand, uh, several thousand dollars to have this work done. So if you see osmosis, beware. It is probably one of the most difficult things to, to cure on a boat. It is possible, but a very, very expensive job. So I hope that gives you some idea of, of what to look out for if you're looking to, to buy a new fiberglass boat. Thanks, Adrian. Some really good tips on what to look for if you're buying or maintaining a fiberglass boat. Next week, we're going to be looking at wooden boats and the pitfalls associated with them. But if you do want more information, jump onto our website or give us a call competition time on River to Reef and something entirely different this time. Up for grabs is the Z650 Kodak digital camera and docking station and to be in the prize draw send us one of these. A photo, a fishy photo, any fishy photo, name, address, telephone number on the back of the photo and post it to the address on your screen now and somebody is going to win that magic digital camera from Kodak. It's that simple so go to it. Let's get those photos in. Well, folks, that was River to Reef. We hope you've enjoyed it and learned something out of tonight's program. Next week, Marine Safety Victoria will show us about buying wooden boats, what not to do and what to look out for. Mark Crockford will be along to explain marine insurance. Very important. So if the old marine insurance policy is due, just hang on for another week and have a look at Mark's information about marine insurance. Steve Atta will be back with Mad About Boats and a wonderful competition again, the Kodak Comp, all on next week's program. We hope you enjoy it and look forward to catching up with you next week. And by the way, if you want a little bit more fishing, Saturday mornings, the River to Reef team on SEM between five and eight. Catch you later. So if I haven't turned up Monday and the boss is pretty dim, I've been away the whole weekend And the wife says I'll kill him If my mobile doesn't answer Tell him she'll be right chief I'm just lost between the river and the reef You'll find me between the river and the reef